They are, quite literally, some of art's holy grails. Francis Bacon's highly sought-after popes. This one, study for a Pope One, is expected to fetch upwards of $40 million at Sotheby's auction house this week, a small price to pay by art's new collectors, says the Fine Art Fund's Philip Hoffman. They might spend $500 million a year, some of these collectors, and uh, they want the really the best, most famous, and, and Bacon is iconic. There are very few of them, of, of popes. There are only uh, perhaps eight in the series. And if you want something that's very rare, a masterpiece that you can buy today, this is what you would get. Works by Manet, Warhol and Klimt are all up for grabs at Sotheby's two summer auctions in London. Total sales estimated to top $450 million. Fifteen years ago, it was barely a tenth of that. Prices driven up by rising demand and a limited supply. Malevich's suprematism 18th construction, a perfect example. There are plenty of fakes knocking around, but the real thing is much harder to come by. This is one of just two that can be directly traced back to the artist, and at $30 million, it's considered cheap. For this painting, buyers are expected to come from Russia. The sanctions clearly no barrier for billionaires. Asian and Middle Eastern demand is also strong, helping combined auction sales in New York last month to breach $2 billion. But talk of a bubble is misplaced, says Jeremy Batstone Carr from Charles Stanley. Many investors, particularly given elevated valuations, are perhaps now looking to take some of their money out of the equity and bond market and put it somewhere else. I think that this is more an indication of bubble conditions in the traditional financial markets than perhaps in the art market. Spotting a good investment, though, isn't easy. Peter Doig was relatively unheard of 10 years ago. This painting is now expected to fetch $10 million. Get in while you can, then, while it's still relatively cheap.